Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Um, first we gotta thank God for being alive, you know, another day. And think about all the deaths that's around right now, you know, within this last two years it's been like really, really hectic. We're on the de- on the death scene. Um, not just from the COVID, from other elements that people were going through. You know, um, and it's 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 actually touching base real hard for me right now. You know, um, it's one thing when, you know, you go through your family and, you know, they have issues and like, you know, medical issues or whatever the case may be. And they, they lose their lives. You know, you prepare for it because it's in your in your family and you know about it and stuff like that. It's still hard to prepare for something like that. However, you know, when it's other people and it, it's coming real fast. You know, it, it, it to me, it's a sign of something, you know what I mean? And um, I just wanted to express that, you know. Um, let's check the weather today here in Charlotte. Alexa, what's the weather today here in Charlotte? Currently, in Charlotte, it's 63 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today, you can expect partly sunny weather with a high of 82 degrees and a low of 60 degrees. Oh, it's going to be pretty warm today, guys. Um, hold on, I want to turn Alexa down because y'all know at 10, 10 a.m. she tells me to eat and she's going to be blasting that and constantly over and over and over. So I'm going to tell her to tone down. Alexa, volume down to zero. She's going to still text me, but I don't know. But I, y'all won't have to hear it. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, my thoughts. You know, my thoughts have changed, you know. Um, after DMX, you know, um, passed away, you know, and me watching his journey, you know, now I know, like I said, uh, I've known a, a portion of his journey, but I didn't know the, ugh, it's always something of somebody with the nonsense and it p- pisses me off. You know, they wait right until I get on my podcast to want to call me, you know. Anyway, um, if he doesn't call back right away, then I know it's not that important. Then um, I'll call him back after this podcast is done. I want to be keeping this podcast very short. Um, as I was saying, you know, me knowing a portion of DMX journey only because of where I grew up at. And not only where I grew up at, he took stand in an area that I, I was in. Um that I was in, and that was Buffalo, New York, you know, um, so I got the chance to see and hear some of the things that he was doing in the city, um, and I told y'all he came to, to, to visit, you know, um, however, you know, just knowing his journey, you know, um, and knowing the things that he was doing, you know, even though he had some Bad things going on, he also had good things going on, you know, and he always wanted us to know about God, you know. Um, I see on Facebook, you know, they say, oh, well, what's your fa- favorite DMX song? Well, I loved all DMX music, for those that want to know. Um, got Almost got a couple of tickets listening to DMX. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget driving across the Lackawanna Bridge, and I was flying, you know. I'm going over to Lackawanna and um, listening to DMX. And the cop put the the um, his lights on, but he never did come behind me, so he was giving me a warning, you know. And everybody in the city of Buffalo and it's a small portion of people in Lackawanna knew who I was. So, you know, everywhere I went, they knew my, my vehicle, you know. So, you know, I did get some breaks in the city. However, yeah, I was going across that bridge like it was no tomorrow. But anyway, um, me, like I said, watching his journey, you know, and I didn't go down the same journey he went down. You know, his life is totally different from my life. However, we still had one thing in common, and that was God. You know, we always try to teach people about God. And I'm not saying that I'm going to stop teaching people about God, but I'm going to stop doing it publicly um, and the reason being is because we do these things publicly. We have to 
battle with other people with the nonsense and they don't even want to pick up the books and read and, and understand what you're seeing. They don't want to understand the life and where you stand in life and the levels of life that you're on, you know, um, and with, with, with that being said, when you, when you look at stuff like that, you know, God already know that we're going to be criticized, mistreated and misused by teaching the word of God. But God also tells you that if, if those are wicked, you get away from it. So with that being said, to me, it's a wicked act. So I need to get away from it. Not because it's, it's, it's harming me right now. But who says that it won't in, in, the, in the future? As watching DMX's life has taught me that even though you're preaching the word of God and you're fighting your own battles, dealing with the negativity around you, it makes you weaker. Okay? And that's what I've learned from his death. You know, everybody has have, have uh, their own learning or... or Things that they may sense from from um, different events happening, and that's what I've learned from um, from um, his his death. You know, he left a lot of kids behind. You know, and that kind of bothers me. You know, it bothers me. I told her to go down to zero, and she she didn't. Alexa, dismiss volume down and zero. I'm going to eat. Um, and those babies need, needed their dad, you know. And my theory is, you know, instead of focusing on trying to help the people, he should have been just focusing on himself to be able to stay alive to be there for them babies. You know, I looked at them babies on TV at the memorial and they all so beautiful, you know. And, and I said, they don't deserve not to have their father, you know. But every day he was dedicating himself to his fans to help them see the light of God, you know. And it took him out of here, you know. The stress of this everyday life trying to do so much to please the people. That's not what God intended for his life. He was a king. Okay? A king that tried to help his community as much as he could. Not for it to take him to the death. Do you see what Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because he had a family himself. That he needed to guide. And now he's... He's gone. He taught them as much as he possibly can, but he had to depend on the family and the other the other siblings to teach them what he has taught the older ones in order to um, be able to rest in peace. You know, and he wasn't done yet. You know, and, and that's what I see. He wasn't done yet. It, it taught me something. And what it taught me was those that want to know God is going to come to you. Okay? Especially if they know God. You know, and my daughter, she actually taught me that recently. You know, because she came to me and she, you know, she said all these things about God on TikTok and Facebook and different, different things. You know, and of course, you know, she watches me pray and teach them how to pray. And uh, we babe, try to live, you know, godly as possible. She doesn't understand why I live the certain way that I live and other people live, you know, differently. And she she finally came to me because I'm one. Um, I've always had my children. Um, well, my daughter, I'm, I'm going to start with my daughter, Shaquana, have them baptized early, you know, Um and for those that know my daughter Shaquana, they know that she's been dealing with some some heavy demons, you know. Um, so I decided with my other kids, I wasn't going to do that. I was going to allow them to gain the knowledge of God on their own and decide what religion they want to be in. That's why um, Dejour wasn't, I didn't baptize Dejour and I didn't baptize Egypt. 
because I wanted them to make that choice and what, you know, um, religion they wanted to be. Um, however, Egypt came to me and she said, mommy, you know, I, I hear all these things about God and I know you, you, you know, you always praying and you say, talk to God and, you know, different things that she may see or hear. She said, I really want to know God. She came to me. Okay. So I, I say that to say, you know, God says you don't have to seek out those that want to know God because they will come to you. Okay. So therefore there's no need for me to teach anymore, you know, because I saw what teaching is doing to these pastors and these ministers and these preachers, like in DMX was one, you know, I, I saw a video of him, um, reading, literally sitting down, reading the, the scriptures to you guys, you know, and telling y'all what y'all need to do in order to, um, to, um, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, our job, the Bible tells us that our job is to do right by our families and our children and, and to, and to spread the word of God, you know, and we can continue to spread the word of God by the way we act, by the way we do things, by how we speak, how we love, you know, um, we don't always have to, to talk it, you know, um, and for those that want to know the word of God, why is this person like this, you know, this person doesn't drink, this person doesn't use drugs, this person, you know, um, try to be good and, and, and be loving and giving. Why is this person like this? Because this person is godly, because God is good. Okay, God is good. Meaning, if you're on, if you're with God, you're going to be good. Okay, in all aspects. Okay, if you walk the word with God, you're going to be good. And people can see the difference. Okay, so you know we can all we all have ways of showing our our, our um godly godly ways and in. People have instincts. They can tell, you know, who's godly and who's not, you know. And like, even with myself, and I'm still a sinner, guys. I'm still, you know, and we all are. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, or the stakes for us, because he knew that we would continue to sin. But we work hard every single day to try to, to do things right. And if, as much as I can give up, I will. Okay, to please God. And that's all he wants is for us to please him. He know we're not perfect and we're not going to give up everything because we're so weak inside and we're fighting demons ourselves. However, as much as you can possibly give him, he's willing to receive and help you down that journey to get to the, to the life that you really want to get to. Okay, with no distractions. With discipline. And, and sometimes that means removing yourself from certain people and being, you know, for the last, uh, I would say, 18 years of my life um, when I left Buffalo. Okay. When I left Buffalo um, 18 years ago, my life has had changed dramatically. Okay. And I just wanted to throw that out there. Um Overnight, I was sat, it was like I was picked up and sat into a, a, a area that was just like me. I mean, of course, you're going to have your snakes and your foes around too. But they were, they were able, you were able to identify them easier. Because it was so much good that the bad stood out. Do you understand where I'm going with that? So now, you know, now that I've moved to North Carolina, it's the opposite way. It's so much bad that the good stands out. Okay. Um, and they look at it as being different or weird because it's not what they're used to, you know. Um, however, God has opened some doors for me, like recently, you know, he has 
done some things, you know, um, that I wish that if, if I would have, I, I, I'm saying to myself, what I'm saying to myself right now is I should have went on ahead and did my business stuff a little bit earlier. I had put it to the side to help my son, you know, um, but the things that I had wanted to do, um, it, it's a, it's a long, it's a long journey. You can't just jump into it overnight and think you're going to be successful. It doesn't work like that. If you want longevity, you know, and the type of business that I'm, I'm doing right now, I need longevity. Okay. So it's not something, well, okay. I just need them to, to, uh, what they call it, um, do a turnover or something like that. I, I'm not in this for a turnover. I'm in this for a long, long haul, meaning generations. So I can't just jump out there and call myself doing a turnover and think I'm going to be successful. No, because that's that's not the plan. And that was never the plan. But now that I've done that and touched ground on that, God has opened up doors. Okay? And not even has he opened up doors... These people are like-minded. See where, where I was in the land of Maryland with like-minded people. So life was a little bit easier. And then when I pulled up out of that, I had to deal with, even though some of the people that came out of Maryland with me, they, they wasn't like-minded. So I was still confused. It was strange to me because I'm like, okay, I got all of these, I got some of the people around me from Maryland, but they're not like-minded. So what am I doing with these people? I didn't even see those people before. You get what I'm saying? Because I was with the like-minded people. So technically they really didn't exist, but God needed me to see those that did exist. That was right there, but they wasn't like-minded. You understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes you will blind yourself because you're around things that's where you fit in. But then when you pull yourself out of that, even though you pull yourself out of that with other people, you will realize that those people weren't for you. They wasn't. They wasn't your circle. They wasn't your type of, 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 um, they're not like-minded. So you shouldn't even be with them. You shouldn't be around them. It's just that they, it was masked because you was around these, these, these other like-minded people and the little things that they were doing, you couldn't see it. You understand where I'm going with this? So sometimes we can be blinded because we are in the land of our world, what we will call heaven. Because you're around the like-minded people. You're around those that's just like you. But then when you get to see the reality of things and how they carry things, you see that they're not like you. So that tells you that you have to get away. But see, God has opened doors for me to put me back around these like-minded people so I can not see them anymore again. Okay? Um, God does things strange sometimes, you know, and we have to take heed to the things that he does. You know, we have to, that's why I say you got to watch the journey and follow the, follow the signs of what God is, is doing. You know, uh, when God has something intended for you and then the devil comes in and, and tries to destroy that, God is going to do everything in his power to stop those people or the devil from destroying what you came to build and what you came to do. And especially when you work for him, he may not do it that night because he needs you to see something. 
He needs you to recognize what he's doing. Because then you'll give him more praise. See, God wants us to know what he's doing. And why he's doing it. You need to know these things. Because then you won't appreciate and praise him the way he should be praised. And see, that's what's wrong with people today. We don't praise God the way God needs to be praised. Because we don't understand why he does the things that he do. We're afraid to accept the things that he does. To show us why we need to love him and be good and do right. And create peace. Okay. When God took me through this journey, I didn't understand why he wanted me to sit still. He wanted me to sit still. And I couldn't understand why. Like, God, uh, why do I need to sit still? Like, when I first came into Charlotte, I couldn't see. I was, I was out here, I got here, and it was crazy how it happened, y'all. I got here in August, no, July of 2016, I got here. Okay, I first came here, um, I left, and then I came back. And when I came back, you know, I was a little sick, but not too, too bad. You know, um, I did have some, I couldn't breathe episodes uh, when I first got here in July. And luckily, you know, Marilyn had gave me some medication that w- will help me breathe uh, just in case. You know, it's like they knew, you know, like I said, God sets things up. You know, it's like they knew. And I went to the doctor before I got there and I talked to my doctor and he said, OK, he didn't even know I was going coming to North Carolina. I didn't even know I was coming to North Carolina to stay quite as kept. Um, but he gave the prescription. So I go to the prescription. I go to the um I go to the uh, pharmacy and I get this big old bag and I'm like, what is all of this? And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of medicine in here. It was the same medicine though. He wanted to make sure I had what I needed, you know, um, because I was about to take a journey. And that journey um, was going to be hard for me. And I didn't even know it. So God set things up. So I had the medicine that I needed at first, you know. But then the winter time came. When the winter time came, you know, um, I I got a job. My allergies bothers me in the winter time, but it doesn't bother me too too bad. But I got me a job, and I'm out and about, and I'm working. Next thing I know, we're about to get laid off, and. We we wasn't supposed to get laid off until August fifth, but the beginning of that that season, my allergies were so bad, and I couldn't see, and I was in pain, and I was just going through so much. It was like unreal. Like when I got here last summer, I didn't recognize that because I had the medicine that I needed. Okay. Long story short, where I'm going with this is, God has set all of that up. Okay. Then the doctors here gave me a medication that didn't even work. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I had to stay in the house for almost two years. When I say stay in the house, meaning I couldn't really go nowhere. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't drive. I couldn't see. I was so messed up, you know. And my friends would have to help me, you know, out here in Charlotte and take me where I need to go. If I need to get to the store, if I need to, you know, they was there for me, you know. So God needed me to see those that would really be there for me if something went down, you know, um, in the new land that I was in. Okay. With that being said, um, overnight, I got better. It was, it seemed like it was overnight. And I was back at it again. You know. God needed me to take my journey through Charlotte and my surrounding areas by myself. He needed me to learn this city by myself. Meet people by myself. Um, embrace this city by myself. 
That's what he needed me to do. That was his intentions in the beginning until I got sick. Okay. And I didn't realize that until recently, within the last two years that we've been going through this COVID. I had to embrace this city by myself through a pandemic. And I loved every minute of it, even though we was going through a pandemic. Embracing the city, getting to know the people, how they act, how the ways, you know, what um, is out there. And there's people out there just like me. Now, you see what the devil tried to do? The devil tried to make me believe that... This is my life, and this is not my life. I knew this wasn't my life. This is not my life. And I said, hey, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I haven't done anything wrong to people because I've always lived godly, okay, always. Now, sometimes bad things are happen, not because I brought it to light, but I've always been a good person and always tried to help Always gave my heart to people. I've always been like that. There's no, no, there's no changing that. <clears throat> I've always been on the front line. Anywhere I go. Why does God always put me on the front line? I don't know. Maybe because I do teach. I teach with my actions. I say all of that to say, you know, when you're around a bunch of devils, it'll start to feel strange. And then you start feeling like, why is these things happening? You're doing everything you're supposed to do. But there's other things happening. It's not because of, always because of you. Sometimes you have to sit back and just allow God to do his work. Okay? And that's what's happening to me right now. And then what, like I said, with DMX dying made it even worse. Well, actually... It made it worse on the behalf of the grievance and me looking at the signs and why it happened and and why um, the the things happen the way they happen. You know, we have to take note in the things that we do and how we do them. You know. Now, we know, if the doctor tell you, you know, and I'm just want to, I'm going to use this for instance. And the doctor told me my cholesterol was a little high. Not so high to where um, I needed to be, you know, need medication or whatever the case may be. Well, for one, I didn't um, fast before I took my blood work. So that could be one of the reasons. Two. I don't normally eat out like that. However, because I was dealing with people that always want to eat out and I didn't have a way to eat other than what they were feeding me. I had no other choice but to eat that. I allowed myself to get off track. Dealing with other people and their devilness and what they decide they want to do with their lives, but that's not my life. And they don't take that into consideration. You know, that's the thing about, you know, certain people. You know, they won't take certain things into consideration. They don't care about your life. They only care about what they're doing and how they do things. Okay? So when you when you get around people like that. You have to find some type of way to get away from that. But see, God, he's, he's always working and he works things 
when, when you're not even paying attention, he's setting up, he's setting up the, pretty much the kill. Okay. <laughs> Because they never, those those people that so-called claim to really be in your corner, really wasn't in your corner because they ain't in their own corners. Okay? They don't love them all. They don't love themselves. They don't know God. You were sent in to teach them that. And they still don't get it. Okay, and by them not getting it, eventually time is up. So my time is up. And I see it. Because now God is taking me back into the room of where I used to be. And with what, um, how I should have been. With the teachings that I was given. However, th those people are not grasping on. So God said, your time is up. You're done teaching. You're done teaching them. You're done. It's over. I'll deal with them. Because see, what God will do is send people into people's lives. Because he knows that they have the potential to be a part of his His goodness they have the potential but they need to learn because some people don't have the knowledge it wasn't taught by their parents to have the knowledge of god so then sometimes god will send people into their lives to help them learn that knowledge and if they don't receive that knowledge the way it should be received throughout all the tests that god gives you then that's when he has to remove the ones that he has appointed to help you get to that point. Okay? God will sometime remove them with death and sometime he just will remove them and put them in a whole nother light to where that person can no longer even see them. And that's the way it works. I've been through it before. So I recognize the, the journey that God is taking me down. Okay. Um, with that being said, there's no, no longer, it's no, no, no need for me to continue to teach. Because I already know the way of God. I know the way of God. I just got to keep living the way of God. And those that do want to know the way of God, because they say to me, I want to be like you. Then that's when I can teach them the way of God. I don't have to get on social media every day trying to get these people to save themselves. Because if they really want to be saved, they will open up the book and read it. And know the way of God. So, my job is to act godly once again none of us are perfect but if I have more godly ways than negative ways the godly people are going to accept me so do you get it so with that being said now I have to learn I had to learn that the people around me wasn't godly. So, and when I say that they wasn't godly, meaning they don't follow the way of God. Not only the way of God, they don't even follow their culture. They want to be things that they're not. You know, a lot of people try to tell me, you know, and this is why I have to put a lot of my black brothers and black sisters on the front line. I didn't have so many um, black women in my life that was very successful other than my mom. She was somewhat successful and my aunt. Um, 
my other aunt, she was successful at home. She was she was the one that taught me how to clean house, how to um, make sure my family is able to eat without me having to spend money. Um, she was still a successful black woman, but it wasn't successful in the world, okay, out in the world. It was success at home, teaching me how to run a household, okay, and keep it in peace and and making sure that my family eat every night and that we we know the word of God and, you know, different things like that. So when it comes to the men, though, the men that came in my life and that God sent into my life, they were able to teach me a little bit more, you know, and, you know, and I, I get tired of people always saying, oh, she's a white girl. She's a white girl. She act like a white girl. She's bougie. She this, and I'm nowhere near bougie. Okay. Um, however, um, like I said, they constantly call me a white girl. Why do I have to be a white girl? But I was raised by black people. No. Fix it. I'm just disciplined. I'm disciplined and I speak my mind. Okay? Why do I have to be something other than what I am? The fact is I'm I'm a black Hispanic. Okay? And that's what I was brought up in. And that's the way I'm going to live. For those that don't like it and don't accept it, that's, that's your problem. Not mine's. But you're not going to tell me that I'm a, I'm living or I act like a white girl when my black people are the ones that taught me how to live like this. You're not going to tell me that. And every single day I get on Facebook and I show y'all these black people that has taught me the things that I know. And y'all not going to take that away from them. Because y'all want to perceive me as this so-called white girl when I am a, a disciplined black Hispanic. Because y'all don't want to recognize that there's people here on the ground that has power just like some of the people in the stars. Y'all don't want to respect that. Y'all don't want to respect that the, there's people on the ground that possess millions and millions of dollars. It's like the people in the stars. Y'all don't want to respect that. Because y'all never met them. Y'all never got the, the chance to be in that circle. But that's not my fault. So you want to mislead my life and tell people... Negative things about my life because you've never seen the reality of real life. That's not my fault. That's something y'all have to live with, not me. So now I'm going back to the circle that I'm used to with the type of people that I'm used to being with. Which is godly people, and they they and some of them still need to be be taught, and they seek that knowledge to even better their lives because they don't understand the hate, the drama, the jealousy. But so you don't have that when you're all when you're around. A bunch of people like you. Okay, you don't have that. You don't have to deal with that. It's like when I was living in Buffalo, I had the jealousy, the hate, the drama. I mean, everything under the sun. And when God picked me up and said, no, daughter, that that portion of your life is older. I'm sitting you with people like you. Now you must be at peace. Now I will blind you of all the negative of those that really amount to nothing. And that's what he did. And he's about to do it again. But he needed me to see something. He needed me to see some things. And I got to see them. 
And I understand it. So my time is up. Um, teaching, you know, I'm, I'm done. When you do stuff, you know, I told you already, you know, I told you what you did wrong, how you did wrong. You don't want to accept. You don't want to get it right. You're headed for destruction. Some people need to even look at their own, you know, life. People write these stories and talk about these stories and they don't even pay attention to their own life. Okay. And what they're doing. Okay. They just want to... Think they're teaching, but they're not applying it. Okay? I told you you're headed for destruction. I told you what you're doing wrong. And if you don't want to get it right, that's not my job no longer to continue to tell you. I let God deal with you. Because God has said in my life enough. I'm tired of my daughter being in pain because of these negative people. Okay? Okay? So now it's time to set her back forth with the people just like her. So they can, we can learn from each other and build. Because we have a different out, outlook and different um, way of living. And those that want to be a part of that is going to come to you. You don't need to continue to teach. You don't need to continue to, to throw out that knowledge to them because they already know. You told them already. How many times can you possibly tell a person something? So, with that being said, <coughs> this will be my last month on this podcast. I will be talking about some things, you know, um, but I'm going to cut this podcast short because my dad called me. So I don't know, you know, it wasn't a double call back. So I know that it's nothing major, you know, because, you know, when something when somebody's sick or ill or whatever the case may be, they didn't even leave a message. So I know that it's not major. I mean, if it was major, I would have to let it go and um, call him back. But I need to call my dad back and see what's going on with him today. Um, but I, this will be my last month on this podcast. I just wanted to let y'all know that. Um, I have to focus on my business. I have to focus on my daughter. You know, um, my son. You know, and I've got grandkids. I know that. I love my little babies. So, you know, I got to focus on continually, continually doing the things that I want to do to make their life easier when they become adults. You know, that's my goal. You know, everybody has their own goals. Some people want to make their life easier. They don't even care about their family. You know, but I'm one that God has taught, you know, you love your family and the people around you. You know, if, nothing, if my mama didn't give me nothing else, she gave me the word of God. You know, so I can't say that. But she's given me a lot. She's given me a lot of um, everything that she she taught me wasn't always right. You know, and I had to learn that as I became an adult. However, um, she led me in the right way, and that's what a parent is supposed to do: lead their children in the right way to make life easier for them. And she t- she taught me that when everything is going gets rough. You have nothing else to turn to. You know who to turn to, and that's God. And now I turn to God every single day. I know he's tired of me, you know. That's probably why he's about to change my life back, because he's like, look, enough is enough. These people just won't get it right, so we got to fix this situation. And I'm going to fix this situation now. You know, she didn't fall victim with them, them, them negative people that I sat around. Her faith is with me and will stay with me. I see that. And see, that was the test to see if I would fall victim just like the rest. But my faith is too strong, and I tell people that. You know, my faith is too strong. Don't think that I'm going to coincide with you with the negative doings that you're doing. You know, and, and it pisses me off, you know, when people try to come to you about negative things that other people are doing. You can tell them what they're doing wrong. But don't hold me to these people because they wasn't raised like me. Okay? They weren't 
on my sideline every day when we grew up. So they don't have the same knowledge I have. So you're not going to hold me captive for the things that they're doing. And if you feel that that's what you're going to do, then God's going to see you too. Okay? Believe it. This is why God is about to take me up out this room. Because I'm starting to be placed on captive because of other people's mistakes. See, I see what God is doing. I know what God is doing. But do y'all know what God is doing and how God works? And that's what he needs y'all to see. Y'all got to have the faith. The faith have to be strong. Who do you love? That's the key. Who do you really love? You can speak a thousand words. But if your actions don't follow them. Who do you love? God is love. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, that being said, you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to try to get on the podcast. Um, I've just been really busy. Um, I had told y'all last week that I wouldn't talk to y'all on Monday, and I still can talk to you on Monday because I had some things I had to take care of that was very important. Um, however, uh, tomorrow I will definitely try to get on. This is your last 30 days with me, um, talking on the podcast. So with that being said, you know, y'all try to take in all the information that y'all possibly can. I would try to throw as much as I can at y'all about God, you know, but I still need y'all to pick up that book. I can't do it for y'all. I just can't. And I'm not going to. And see, that's what DMX tried to do. And I'm not going to take the same steps as he did because it didn't work. And God had to show me that. Even though he preached the word through his music, he preached the word by sitting down, you know, reading it to you guys. It still didn't work. What did y'all learn? And that's what his death has taught me. So with that being said, you know, I, I get my condolences to all those that lost their lives recently, you know, and their families, you know. Um, even my guy, DJ Mike Ski, he lost his brother, you know, and I, and I felt so bad because I'm like, wow, you know, we're going through all of this. You know, he's a... a um, music DJ so with him DJing all these guys music and then they, they passing away and then his brother in the midst of all that you know that's just too much coming at a person you know and I know he was just going through it you know and all we could all I can do me personally is pray you know for for all my friends those that that's been there for me and um and continue to be there for me you know I'm, I'm I'm blessed to have people like him, you know, in my life, you know, even though he's not physically in my life, we do things online and we help each other online, you know, um, I was thankful that God has sent him in my life, you know, because he, he made some things happen, you know, so, you know, my, my heart always goes out to those, you know, that if you shed love and you shed good. And love and good comes back. That's why. You know, that's why it comes back. You know, so shout out to DJ Cool Mike Ski. You know, um, he, he lead us on Sunday, you know, um, with music, get us going. As you know, we have this thing now. Well, we just stay in the bed, you know. Well, not me, because I'm always running around. That's why my legs is always hurting. Because I can't stay off these legs. Every time I try to, it's like, it's not happening. Even when I want to, I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to sit it down today. And for some reason, I just can't sit it down. I may be having things to do. It's like the other day, I had wanted to have some salmon. I said, I'm going to get up and make some salmon. I'm going to chill out in the house today and do some things around the house. Just focus on, you know, in the house. Here we go. The salmon was bad. I had to go outside. Go to the Sam's Club. 
and change the salmon. I said, well, I was supposed to sit still today. And it didn't happen. You know, so that's why my little legs be killing me. You know, I've been on these legs so much, running around, doing so much. Y'all don't even know. These legs got so many miles on them. It's unreal. And they tired. You know, so I get it. <laughs> I understand. But people got to realize that your body gets tired, you know, and you have to rest. You have to. You have to take a day out to rest. Okay. Clean your system. Clean your mind. These are things that we have to do. You know, we have to dedicate our lives to doing these things. You know, it's like I tell people, you know, like with the diet situation. Oh, I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. No, don't do a diet because a diet is temporary. Do a lifestyle change so that way you can live the same way every single day. It becomes repetitive. So then that way it's a part of your lifestyle. You know, just like when I pray every day, that's a part of my lifestyle. Every day that I get up and I thank God for being alive. Every time I get out, go outside and I pray. Every time, you know, something, well, not every time something gets bad, I pray. And the reason why I don't, because God allows me to handle a situation on his own. And if I don't, I don't get through, I allow him to take it from there. And I don't even have to pray for it. I just stop. I don't even have to pray about it. Because God already knows what's going on in my life. So I just let him move from there. You know, I had to learn that, you know, sometimes we, you know, because I'm one that's a big worrier, y'all. I worry about everything, but God has taught me, daughter, no more. If you can't control it, leave it. I give you the power to try to control and fix the situation. If you can no longer control that situation, leave it. And I'll handle the rest. And he has proven that to me. So, with that being said, you know, I don't worry about it. That's just what it is. But this is the last month. Y'all will be hearing from me on podcasts. I'm no longer paying for y'all to hear me speak anymore. (laughs) Okay? No longer. If you want to hear me speak, you better stand before me. That's the way it's going to (laughs) work, okay, from this point on. If you don't stand before me, if you're not in my presence, you won't hear me speak to you. And that's just what it is, okay? Um, I love you guys. You know, I'm going to always love y'all because that's godly. I'm going to always care because that's godly. But if you don't stand before me and come to me and tell me that what you need or what's going on with you, there's no need for me to help you because you're telling me there's nothing wrong. Okay, no more me trying to figure out what you're going through and how you're going through it and none of that. I'm not doing that no more. It's just like chasing a losing battle, you know. You make yourself tired, you make yourself weak, trying to help others. That in actuality, they don't even know what their own problems are. That's it for me. If you want help, I'll give you the help. I'll give you the knowledge. But if you don't, it is what it is. It's on you. Because guess what? When Judgment Day comes, God ain't going to ask me why I didn't help so-and-so. He's going to ask you why you ain't help yourself. And that's one thing that DMX brought out there, and I, and I, I listened to that, and I was like, wow, you know, that was kind of deep. You know, love yourself. Love yourself enough to gain the knowledge, no matter what you're doing. Whether it's about God, whether it's about the world, whether it's about whatever. Love yourself to know the difference between good and bad. Because if you don't know... That's nobody's fault but yours. That means you didn't gain enough knowledge in life. That's what that tells us. That if you don't know the difference between good people and bad people and the way you're supposed to treat people, 
then that means you have not gained enough knowledge in life. Because it's simple. <laughs> you know. Something else DMX has said. Um, that threw me for a loop. <laughs> you know, how did he put it? You know everyone... You know who everyone is, whether they're a snake, whether they're a foe, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Because they show you their character from the beginning. He didn't say it exactly how I'm saying it because I'm trying to remember how he said it. But they show you their character. So by them showing you their character tells you who they are. So you know how to deal with them. Okay, well, this person right here, I can't talk to this person. Is this person gonna run back and run, run off and tell everything? Well, I can't, so I can't ask this person about this because this person gonna look down on me and try to put me down. You know the character. You know who they are. You know that they, they're a snake. They're a snake. That's what it is. So you know you can't do certain things with a snake. Okay. Because a snake will turn around and get all your information and mistreat you and still bite you. And I've always kind of lived like that. But I just didn't recognize it until he said it. You know who certain people are already. Because this is the character they build in front of you. Now it's different if a person builds one character in, one, in front of one person and another character in front of another. Then that's just the way they deal with the, that those people, but not you. Okay, so you you got to look at that too because you got some people that may treat this particular person over here a certain kind of way because of the character that they possess. However, but treat these other people or somebody else a total different way because of the character they possess because they have to deal with them for some odd reason. Okay. However, when you get those that have that character that you, you can see that you just, they just no good. You say to yourself, mm -mm. I already know about this person. So when certain things about certain things, I'm not even going to them. I'm not even asking them. I'm not even... Uh, 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 wasting my time because they're not the person fit because their character is not fit. So why am I going to even bring it to their attention? You get what, where I'm going with this? If you already know a person is a snake but you still got to deal with them for some odd reason, certain things you just don't bring to them. You just like shake it off and keep it moving. That's just how you have to deal with it. Because we're stuck in this God, in this world. Granted, we want to create a godly world, but it's not going to happen. Because people are too deep in. No matter how much God is showing them, I can destroy. If you don't do what I'm asking you to do, how much is it? In the Bible, it's telling you, and they still ain't listening. What can you possibly do? But learn how to deal with them and put them in a box and by themselves. I'll deal with you on this level. And I'll deal with you on this level. And you're not fit for that level. And you're just, I, I just can't deal with you. And that's just how we have to do it. And that's how I've always lived my life. Pretty much. You know, since I was young. People say, uh, Jackie, you, you'll be here, with, be here with us for one moment. And the next thing you know, you be like, I'm out. You know, just like my son, he made that song, him and, um, him and, um, Monty, they made the song right out, you know, I'll come visit, you know, you saying something crazy and I'm looking at you, I already know your character, I already know who you are, I already know you're a liar, I already know you're a thief, I already know you this or whatever the case may be, and then you sitting in my face and you trying to tell me some other stuff and I'm looking at you like, okay, you know what, I'm not going to entertain this no longer, I'm gone. And that's just how I always lived my life. 
When I found that things wasn't entertaining no longer because they was telling you some falsified nonsense or doing some falsified nonsense, I'm gone. That's one of the reasons why I know so many people. <laughs> because I keep it moving. It's time to ride out. Because you, 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 your mind ain't right right now. I see where you're going with this. You're trying to put up some falsified stuff. You, you, you're going left, you know, and then you want to come back right. And you're confusing me. And once you confuse me, I'm gone. Because I'm not going to be on a roller coaster ride. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt in the beginning. I'll even look at your life and see why you've, you've, been, you've acted the way you've acted. But once I see that this is a pattern, oh, it's time for me to ride out. So now it's time for people to come into my world. Okay? If you want to be godly, you know, I'm not going to share my world, my worlds no longer. Okay? If you want to know my world and you want to know how I live and what goes down in my life, you have to be around me. And if I feel like you're not good enough to be around me, then you won't be around me. But if you come in 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 in, in the name of God and with 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 the love of wanting to know God and wanting to understand why some of us ride the way we ride, then I will accept you with open arms. But the one moment that I see that you are foe, you got to go. Okay, and that's just what it is. You know, I get rid of people out of my life on a daily basis. It's easy to me. I just need to let y'all know that. It's very easy to get rid of the snakes and the foes. It's not that hard for me. It's not going to hurt me. It's not going to make me or break me. When God, when I wake up and God says it's time, get rid of them. That's what I'm going to do. You got to go. You can't be around me. But we give everybody a chance. Even if they, they did wrong in the past. And they say, you know what, from this day forth, I just want to be around these type of people. And I want to do right by these type of people. We're going to give you open arms. But the moment that you decide that you want to act another way, you will be dismissed. It's, 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 it's no if ands, or buts about it. You know, and that's just what it is. Because that's what the Bible tells us. If it's wicked, get rid of it. And God gives us time to see how much wicked, you know, and to let people know where they went wrong if they did something wrong. You know, you don't just get rid of them right away. You know, you let them know, like, I, I, I really don't appreciate that. Well, I don't get down like that, you know. Then you see if they do it again. And if they do it again, you're like, okay, this is just who you are. All right, so now it's time for you to go. And that's just how it works. You know, it's simple. Don't make things harder than what it really is. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. This is Miss JJ Diamond, Jacqueline Richardson, Deja, Jackie, whatever y'all call me. Talk to you soon.